Generators are both powerful, but also underused. And many tutorials that explain generators in JavaScript only scratch the surface. But this video is going to be different. In this video, you're going to go deep. And you're going to learn all the advanced theory behind generators, so lock in. And the main use case for generators are sagas, but there are also other use cases that this video is going to show to you. The short answer to the question, what is a generator, is that generators are pull streams. And I thought it was very fitting to shoot this video in front of a stream, kind of as a metaphor for generators. Anyways, pull stream, right? Two words. Both might be foreign to you, but we're going to explain both. So what is a stream? A stream is just data over time. And there are two types of streams, push streams and pull streams. So let's start with push streams. A push stream is anything where you are not in control when the data comes through. And some examples are WebSockets, reading a file from disk, or even server sent events. Here's an example in code. First, require the file system module and use the file system module to call its create read stream method to create a read stream. And now hook into the on data method. This method is called whenever data comes through. And then hook into the on end method which is called when all the data has finished coming through. Lastly, hook into the onError method, which is called when something goes wrong. As you can see, hooking into the on method makes it so that you are not in control when something happens. But the opposite of that is a pull stream, which is when you decide when the data comes through. But before we look into code examples with generators which are pull streams, right, you first need to understand another concept, which is lazy versus eager. And Eager means that data is evaluated immediately, regardless of whether the data is needed in that moment or not. And obviously push streams are eager, but another example for eagerness in JavaScript are array methods. Here's a code example. Create an array, numbers, which contains the numbers one to five. Then call the dot map method to square all the numbers in that array. Map immediately processes all the elements in the array and returns the result. Another example for eager data structures in JavaScript are promises. And you might be thinking, wait, Jan, I thought promises are, you know, lazy because the data comes in late. But no, promises are eager because of four reasons. First, immediate execution. The function passed to the promise, known as the executor function, is executed immediately when the promise is constructed. Secondly, irreversible operation. Once the executor function begins executing, it cannot be stopped or paused by its consuming code. The result of its operation, either resolution or rejection, is queued in the JavaScript event loop and handled as soon as possible. Thirdly, there's no lazy option. That means a promise lacks any built-in mechanism to defer or cancel its execution until its value is needed. And number four, but lastly, side effects. Due to the eager nature of promises, any side effects included in the executor function, such as API calls, timeouts, or IO operations, will happen immediately when the promise is created. Here's an example. Start your code example with immediately logging out some data. Then create a new promise and log something out in the executor function, but also resolve with a string. Then log something out after the promise creation. Lastly, hook into the promises.then method to log out the string that you're resolving with. If you run this code, what you will see is before promise, inside the promise executor, after promise, and lastly, the resolve data, which shows you the eager nature of a promise. The opposite of eager is lazy. And lazy means that data is only evaluated when it's needed. An example for something lazy is a pull stream. But another synchronous example are the operand selector operators. Here's an example. Create a function called process data that takes in some data, which in this case is going to be a number. Then it locks out the data. And finally, it squares it. Then create some data, in this case, just the number five, and create a Boolean that you're going to set to false. Then use the logical AND operator to either print out the isDataProcess Boolean or the function. But what you're going to see is that the function never runs. And that is because the logical AND operator or operand selector operators, both actually the OR and the AND operator, are lazy. That means that because the Boolean is false, it terminates early and just returns the result false instead of also returning the right-hand side of the operator, which would be the function. So you're never going to see the console log in your output. So let's finally answer the question, what is a generator? A generator is a pull stream in JavaScript. This means it's a special kind of function where you can pause the execution and resume it at a later time. The generator function returns the generator object, which conforms both to the iterable protocol and the iterator protocol. Here's an example in code. Create a function myGenerator using the function keyword that you're used to, but add a little star behind it. This turns it into a generator. 
Then use the special yield keyword to yield the following string, which together spells hire senior React developers at ReactSquad.io. By the way, I'm Jan, I'm the CTO of React Squad, and if you need to hire senior React developers, click the link in the description. Let's continue. You can then use the generator as an iterator by just calling it, and the thing that you get back is an iterator object. And on this iterator object, you can call the next method to get the next value in the sequence. Every time you call the next method, you're gonna get back an object. And the object has two properties, done and value. The done property tells you whether there's more data, and the value property contains the value by the corresponding yield. And then, as you call the next method more and more, you're gonna get all the values from the next yields until there are no more yields and the generator is done, which is when the done property flips to true. Since the generator object also conforms to the iterator protocol, you can simply loop through it using your favorite loop. In this case, you're gonna see a for loop. Apart from the dot next method, generators also have a return method and a dot throw method. The return method terminates the generator's execution and returns the specified value, also triggering any finally blocks. The dot throw method allows you to throw an error inside the generator at the point of the last yield, which can be caught and handled or allow the generator to clean up through a finally block. If uncaught, it stops the generator and marks it as done. Here are some examples for both methods. Create a number generator that just yields the numbers one to three, but wrap the yielding in a try catch block. Then create the iterator instance by calling your generator. Next, you can call the generator twice, but then return early and pass the value to the return function. The value will override the value of the last yield. To demonstrate the dot throw method, call your generator function once to create a new iterator, and then call the dot next method once. Then wrap the call of the dot throw method in a try catch, and you're gonna see that what gets logged out is a new object with the done property set to true, and the value is now undefined. You can also pass numbers to generators. Try to predict what gets logged out in the next example. Create a new generator called more numbers that takes a number and then immediately logs out that number. Then yield an expression that adds two to that number and log out the result. Then yield a new expression that adds the first number to the most recent one and logs out that result. Now call your more number generators with a number and then call the dot next method. The first thing that gets logged out is the number that you passed into your generator. That is because your generator only starts running once you call next for the first time. Then when you call next for the second time, what gets logged out is actually the thing that you pass into the second next call. And then when you call next for the third time, nothing gets logged out or undefined because you haven't passed anything into the last next call. Here's the example that we saw earlier where we read the file from disk, refactored using a generator. Import the file system again and then create a function get chunk from stream that takes in a stream. And the function returns the promise that resolves with a chunk after it pauses the stream. When the stream ends, you resolve with null. And when there's an error, you reject that promise with that error. Finally, you resume the stream. Then you create a generator function that takes in a file path and then creates the stream and wraps that stream in a while loop. And because generators also conform to the iterable protocol, you can now loop through it using a for loop. There are three main use cases for generators. First, lazy evaluation, which means to generate data or process large or infinite sets of data. Second, asynchronous programming, where you handle asynchronous operations. And third, iterators, which is when you want to stop in between steps for complex flows. You probably want to see some real world examples, but you're not going to see Saga examples because that is for a future video. So if you want to see that, then subscribe to this channel now. Another real world example is when you want to be in control when you get a value. And here's a real world example showing you a test case that uses generators to set up the data in the test. In this test, you define a role generator to sequentially provide a list of roles for users within an organization. When you iterate through the for loop, you can grab the respective role that the user needs. When you iterate through the users and a user needs to be assigned a role, you can use a generator to get the next role that you want to assign. The reason a generator as opposed to an array is used in this test to set up the data is that in the for loop that iterates through the users, you don't know the position of the main user and you don't want to assign a role to the main user and a generator lets you grab the next role on demand. Thank you so much for watching and if you learned something, subscribe for more advanced JavaScript and React content.